Okay, let's call the meeting to order at 1208 on Thursday, May 9th. Roll call. Carlos Blanco. Present. Anex Benavides. Here. Ricardo Solis. Margarito Benavides. Jorge Dominguez. Eduardo Ochoa. Present. Fernando Vélez. Present. Luis Ramirez. Hello. <laughs> Good. Okay. Need approval of minutes from uh, two years from now. Well, the last, the last yeah, we, we didn't have, have a quorum, so there was no right. minutes from the prior. So we don't need, we need, need. So this is a minutes from not last, but previous meeting. So we have a motion. Motion. So we have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Communications, Mr. Art. Chick-fil-A is good. Pass the question. No, no. Go ahead. Keep it civil. Go ahead. It's because the Rio Grande, I had to meet my, my, my girls part of the Rio Grande committee, right? And they were talking about the effects of the law affecting our water source. Like where they're going to build the law is going to affect the water source. And I keep telling them, I go, you guys, be able to get educated on what you're talking about. So I just want to know if that's something that it, it does affect if the law does, does get built. Does that affect us on, on a water source that where it's going to get built? Well, it depends on the intake. You know, you know, that's the only thing is if there's a structure near or by our intake to access our intake. Because we're saying because of the plants, that this and that, that's going to... Vegetation, wildlife, you know, the ecosystem, you know, those things. No, no, those are things that they brought up and I go... No, okay. but the plant will be in, outside the wall, right? It won't be in the United States and it won't be along the Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I'm saying, like, they have this whole thing that said, guys, are you educated to know what, how, where? What's it going to do? So that's why I'm bringing it up here. Is it something that it's going to, if it, if it does happen, is it going to affect? Well, it affects the ecosystem. You want the ecosystem to, you know, be natural, you know, because the river, you know, has always been a natural environment. But then when you put a man-made structure, you increase erosion, you increase sediment transport, you know, all those things. Yeah, but they're saying that all the dirt's going to go in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really low enough so that sediment is going to affect when they're digging. And when they're contacting, it's going to affect the uh, Yeah, but yeah, you'll okay. get higher. No, 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 but the question is education. I'm not, I, I don't know, I'm just bringing up the... Right. Number one, they're not going to build a wall in a flood zone. So all probability, the wall will be built half a mile away from the flood zone. I told them that too. Like it's not back to now, now it's going to take away from the ranch of land that's had for 400 years to the river. And that people don't realize it. Everybody thinks they're going to put a wall in the, down the middle of the river like Greg Abbott tried to put some buoys out there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, it's all politics. But it will affect the wildlife. It will affect the cattle and the uh, cattle going to the river to get water. It's going to affect a lot that way. But as far as erosion, uh, those barriers, they'll build barriers forever. But the fence is not going to be on the river or near to the river. That's what I told my I think it's going to be right on the river. Yeah, Father Martin told me it's going to be right behind the park where the houses are at. So that's where the Vega starts. That's what I got told. That's way away from the river. Well, but the Vega is the edge of the flood zone. So I can go show you where the Vega's here and the fence is half a mile away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's, that's why I'm opposed. I'm opposed to the fence because you're not going to stop them from coming. That comes through the bridge. That's for asylum. As far as communications, just wanted to announce. We did have a groundbreaking, I don't know, for the 36 inch uh, transmission line. Uh, that was this morning and it went well. Um, it's one of the transmission lines that we're replacing on Frost uh, from Jefferson water, water Treatment Plant all the way to the uh, Lion Boots and Jack Club site. Thank you. And, uh, I believe we're going to be having pre-construction this afternoon. And, uh, or we are having pre-construction this afternoon. I believe we will. I believe. I believe we will have one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the project's moving forward. And uh, 
but just to show, you know, the, the infrastructure that we're replacing, it's just a small portion of what we need to do. This, the project length is about two and a half miles. We have 1,100 miles of pipe, and uh, there's still a lot of pipe that we need to replace, and the, especially the, the branching pipes, the uh, mains into the neighborhoods, especially in the older part of town. And that's something that I'm working on to identify and prioritize those areas that are giving us the most problems, the, the yeah. biggest issue. And typically, it's our cast iron and ductile iron sections. Yeah. 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 Cast iron used to be a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know at the, at the last council meeting, this past council meeting, I identified our breakage rate, you know, how we compare to the, the rest of the community. But we're, all, we're comparable. Uh, it is high above the national standard. And I think it's 11.1 breaks per 100 miles and we're way above that but we, we're comparable to areas along the real break mm -hmm. so it's not that bad but it's again it's dependent on the age of your system how your system is being operated and the soil conditions and the temperature so uh, those are the factors but that study was done by utah state university and it's one that was finished back in december and it's an interesting fact. So the majority of the breaks are your cast iron, ductile iron, mm -hmm. and asbestos. Those are the three pipe candles that are mostly ten to ten. And typically your, your metallic pipes, which is your cast iron, ductile iron. And the average age of those pipes that are paying are above 73 years old. So anything, and right now I've got my staff working on it. I have my staff identifying pipes that are older than 73 years old. We ha I have a heat map that shows where the lines are breaking, uh, where the occurrence has happened. And what I'm going to do is take that heat map and compare that to the pipes that are over 70 years old and then try to focus on that. Something that I'm reviewing, there's, there's a program that Da Vinci, it's a division program, it's an artificial intelligence. And it does forecasting based on your historical breaks. We'll take all that data, all your break history, and age of pipes, locations, temperature, soils, weather, and it'll take all this information and it'll predict where the likelihood of failure will occur. And what I need that tool for is to be able to identify, because they've had a good 80 plus percent success rate in picking those locations that need to be prioritized so that I can then say, okay, I've got $5 million, where can I put that $5 million? And you put in your cost factors and everything, and it'll plot out where you need to do. Well, I want to just take care of areas around the schools. It'll generate layout. Well, okay, I want to generate areas around the apartments. I want to just downtown. You give it a criteria, and it'll give you that. Yes, sir. What's going on on Jack of I mean, I know they've had issues. They had issues last week. You've had issues. Is there something where they're, they're always having issues with the water pressure? Well, the recent break was the the one on McPherson was on. No, but the contractor hit the no, water. No, 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 that's, that's another one. one. The, the, I know about that. Maybe not the one that, that was on. by the FedEx. The the, the Unitech. Unitech, yeah. That that one they hit a 24 inch transmission. Mm -hmm. Well, that one I do know. Yeah, that caused that affected. You know, he literally turns too much and the pressure broke it up. But I'm talking about, no, I, got a lot, I saw a lot of reports of, of Jackman Road having low pressure. It's not the first time. Is there something, because the pipes are, are not that, not that so I was just wondering if. The only, the only thing that has affected is the recent breaks. Okay. And, so and that affected the whole. It affected all of North. <coughs> and then, you know, I know. Well, the kiln tank got affected too. Yeah, the kiln tank, you know, drop, elevation drop. Uh, but is that due to all the construction that's going along the... Well, the yeah, area? in fact, the, the contractor that hit the, the pipe, he's the one that's doing the work. He didn't have a permit, right? Well, he didn't have a permit, but he's doing the textile project for the city. It's a city project. Because they're, 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 it's, it's tied in with the textile. But he does have to have a permit. But he had already exposed the water line. It was already exposed, everything. And he just hit it. 
<laughs> it was just the operator error, but it affected a large portion of the. And then does it have backup sleeves or anything? Like that. In those instances, you all back charging to come fix it? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna set some costs for that. That's the hardest part, man. For where these guys try their best, <laughs> and then they still have been in line with with another contractor. I mean, it, and then they don't have backup materials. I mean, you've got to have backup materials. We're scared right now with 36, you know? Well, you know what? That all applies to the phone company. You know? If you bring them back, it's bad. <laughs> I, I, I thought they just over-excavated and the pressure just, there was so much pressure. No, but they hit it. You can, you can see where they hit it. I, I, they were like, how do you do that? Right, right, right. <laughs> Because I see it's open territory. It it's open territory. Oh, There's no streets. He was texting and big. Probably true. That's part. Yeah. Brother Sam, don't you know? Everyone in the community is watching TV or texting. And then when they start drifting. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that, that that's uh, something that I'm going to present to council about having that tool available so we can prioritize our replacements. Because right now what, what we're using is. The, the heat map, where, which, is, which is identifying the areas that break the most and where we're getting the most problems. Like in other words, the That's biggest cool. issues, people call it nerve. The biggest complaints, we try to take care of it. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know? mm -hmm. So that's what we've been doing. And, but we need to prioritize, because like I said, every year we're spending close to three to five million dollars on this. Water line replacement, repair, it's just, and it's going to get, get the more time goes by, the worse it's going to get, especially in smaller neighborhoods, the older neighborhoods. That's all I've got for smart communications. Anything else communication, folks? All right. I have a question. Though. Yes. Um, it probably does not pertain to the water and the, the utility, but what's going on in the uh, that Corpus Street by Murphy Hospital over there in Murphy Hospital? That's some construction on for over three years. Gallegos paving. They just take off. They take them off. Oh, it's Gallegos paving. Remember, they shut down the street. But isn't it summit? No, that's summit, the, that's, summit that's, is, that's the four blocks of summit. The one summit that he's talking is working about. on. Really? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's they're replacing the water and sewer, but it's an engineering it, project. It's, it's, an, it's, it's a street, an street enhancement project. Oh, okay. Remember, we did that project. But, like, but there's a it's, there's a lot of extras that. Like putting a nice little name, I, like it's a lot of things they're asking for. Oh. Uh, Sidewalks. They, they want the nine, they want the eight. name on the street and certain type, like it's not like a like a simple construction. It's a lot of detail, and that's why we said we said nah. It's a beautification. It's a beautification project. We want big H, a big A, B, I, like yeah. I like yesterday I noticed I was driving. But they should have been and I no I noticed that they removed all those. Uh, like I would say a tin structure that they had there in Clark and on Texas and Elmo and they put a very nice cement or masonry structure at Heights. <coughs> so yeah. that, that, that looks presentable work. Yeah, it's kind of a beautiful case. Yeah, that really nice. it looks better than what it was before. Mm -hmm. I wish it was just separate, like do all the utilities, all that, and then have another bit for beautification. It's a, we're just like, we're not that, we're not that, that type of people to be in the like that. So we did it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? All right, let's move on to you know, our five current CIP items. Okay. I'm going to pass out. This oh, is... Don't look like that, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to act like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is... You know, he was young. He was needed. Well, I, I couldn't finish my sentence. Uh, but I'm going to pass out some CIP. This is a draft. I'm distributing. Distributing a handout that has the CIP. Wait, I, it is called a draft because we have not approved it yet. Oops, I got chocolate. Thanks. That's your copy. So, if you notice, 
this is just a draft. It's got the water at the beginning, at the very end, it's the cut sewer. The water, we're, we're looking at the line item that's called unfunded and proposed. Everything else, whatever sets system revenues, we have that every year, and that is that comes from operational money. Um, the one that says TWDB needs to get, I need to move that forward to the, to the future years. That is not going to happen this year. But if you look at the unfunded and the proposed, we have a total of 100 million, 100 million 751. And if you look at the last page, which is unfunded but for sewer, we have 43 million 304. Well, obviously that's 143 million dollars that we need to sell a bond for. But in meeting with the financial advisor, I think we can probably only sell 100 million this year. So we have to kind of go back to the drawing board and kind of cut some of these projects that are currently under the unfunded and say what is truly, truly critical. Mm -hmm. And that's only because we haven't done a water and sewer rate study yet. So we're still trying to survive with our existing rate structure that we have in place. And even then, it's going to be a little tight. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. Um, and then we still have to go through the through the process to determine if we can truly afford the bond. You know, if we can sell it, we can afford it, right? Um, we are currently, I guess, reviewing the qualification for the for the firm that was selected to do the rate study. Um, I'm reviewing the proposal. The proposal, right? <coughs> but even then, we need to get counsel to if whatever they come up with, we still need council approval before anything can be done. So this is just a little bit into what we have that we feel needs to get done, but it can only be done if we sell a bond, unfortunately. And I think if you talk to your council members regarding the CIP, um, you need to let them know that we need to continue to make progress on the replacement of the projects that we're doing. Because if we fall back, it just means we're going to get further and further behind. Because mm -hmm. I think they never have addressed the infrastructure aggressively. I'm trying to keep the thing the momentum going. Um, there's a lot of projects that we need to do. I need to keep up with growth. I need to replace them. Uh, we need to oversize for industry, for development, and be ready for that growth. I need to be also ahead of some of these um, emerging contaminants, the PFOS, there's the other stuff that's coming in, the treatment, the sludge, you know, I have to address PFOS in that. So there's things that we're, we're going to be hitting on that are going to affect that funding, that money. So we need to continue to fund replacement, fund the operations, and maintain that rate that gives us that opportunity. And I cut back, have to come back on projects. The other thing that I noticed that I'm hearing is the general fund is going to tap more monies off of our revenue. In other words, revenue is going to, because we're a good fund, you know, everybody, the enterprise fund, utilities is a good fund, but then they start tapping, okay, you need to pay more to the general fund because they don't want to increase taxes. So, but the thing is, we, the word politic we need to be able to have costs. If the operation, if police and fire are the ones that are making the costs go up in Texas, let Texas pay for it. We need, utilities needs to take care of its facilities, its infrastructure. We need to focus that. Yes, I don't have a problem, or it, not, it's not a problem, but we should be paying our fair share to general fund for, you know, the administration of the department. Yeah, that's so why I don't understand that speech of the council and said it's well it's not politics. No, it's all politics. Because she goes she goes, she went like, oh this and this but it has nothing to do with politics. no, it has to do with everything with politics. We still don't have our rates at which like everybody else. No. If you notice I don't know if anybody saw Harlington Waterworks, their rate structure went up fifty percent for sewer because of a sewer project that they were doing. How much? Fifty. <coughs> yes, sir. Is that comment? Then, Harlingen. 
Is the Lower Rio Grande Valley all connected? Is it like a metropolis area or something like that? Like, will the rate that go up in Harlem will it affect the people in Mercedes or the people in Macau? Mm -hmm. That just Harlem Trail Waterworks is just itself. Each, it's just itself. Each, each entity Harlem has its own. Some Benito Mercedes has their own. Mm -hmm. Macau PUB Brownville PUB West Local has its own. There's all those municipalities. They have their own. The largest provider is North Alamo Water Supply Corporation. They're a rural service provider. They're out in the rural area. Same thing with uh, Military Water Supply Corporation. Mm -hmm. Sherryland Water Supply, that's another rule provider. Mm -hmm. they're, they're redoing all the water lines, they're pipe brushing everything. But we're doing all the work over there. So they're, they know number one is water. And here, we, for some reason, it's not number one. Look, they, they, they think the river well, take care of it. Uh, thinking about this and at a, and a geographical term, mm. although if this opinion on my behalf is highly speculative. Uh, they, Arlington, Mercedes, they are much closer to the Gulf of Mexico than we are, right? So if it were to be possible, they could be working on our desalinization plants mm -hmm. because the stretch of the pipe would not be as far as Laredo is to the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. However, that if it were to ever reach that level, it's something that I was thinking when you said that, well, let's uh, take our foot off the Rio Grande River. <laughs> and we are going to need desalinization plants it, it, in the it, near future. It's coming in, okay. in the next 50 years. Mexico, yeah, I'm going a little bit off, the, off keel here, but the city of Mexico has like 10% water. They, they just have no more water. And they're just here. So they, they are seriously thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But that's Mexico. And that's, for, I mean, Mexico is like in the center of the country, and they're even a the further stretch from the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean or the lower part of the Pacific Ocean. Anyway, I yield. Thank you. But um, that's, as far as the CIP, we need to fund our needs. No, I've, I've, always, I've always said this in every meeting, can you send us something like, I know we have all this, but say, hey, guys, these are the ones I want you to ex explain why they're important, in such an order, where you need to get funds, so we can actually talk to our city council members and say, this is coming from us, and Mark, where he stays, so you understand once he comes up to the, to the city council meeting, you know what he's talking about, you know, and I think that's what's lacking, and, and I don't know if nobody reads, but I don't know if they know or understand when you're going up there, the knowledge that you have, and they're just like, well, they're just looking at the money factor, but not looking at the factor of what the future is going to tell. Just today, uh, doing that groundbreaking, it's huge, but this is how much it's going to cost just to start doing some sort of rehab. Two and a half miles. You know? But, but what, what, what I'm saying here is that we keep talking about it, kept saying, hey, send us something so we could go. I know, Mr. Seattle, Mr. Seattle, look, let me sit down explain to you these things are going and these projects that are coming and why they need to be funded. You know, because I don't know if they have that knowledge and they, or they just sit there and listen mm -hmm. and think they know what you're talking about. Because you go there with the knowledge, knowing everything, but then I can sit there and not understand what the hell you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. You handle this because it's what we need, my little, what does that mean? But, for example, that, that map right there, it tells you what we got to do or what we're doing. Uh, but it doesn't show me all the new groundbreaking that's going on all around town. And how are we going to supply it to everybody, keep everybody at this low pressure, high pressure? Uh, so, you know, I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I missed it or why not. Are we going to have a meeting with the councilmen together, unified? Because you talk to yours, I talk to mine, he talks to his. And well, we all have to have the same. Thing. They don't hear the same yeah. verbiage, right? I think and, when we have like our budget meetings, is when it's important to have your backup. Like right now, I can give you this draft. And if you take it to them, they're going to listen to you, but there's nothing that we're going to go to council in the well, upcoming days so, for them to know. I agree with you, but that's the problem, is that we need to keep re-educating them. Hey, remember, we, I don't want to take them this. I want like a summary from you guys. Like, yes, these are all these, but these are the ones right now that are coming <clears> out, <throat> hopefully by the budget that we need to attack. So every time we do meet with them, it's like, oh yeah, you keep talking about it, not do it. 
right before the budget. It's actually visual effects. And this one, yeah, this, this list for each one, I have to cut it down to 100 between both water and sewer. Yeah. So I've got to cut 40, uh, you know, 40 plus million dollars off of this. No, no, that's what I'm saying. We're not, we're not, so, just, we're so not, so we're not, we're not there yet, but uh, as soon as I get to that, even, I'm even, even saying, hey, right now these are the ones you're working on. All these, but you know what, these are the problems, but you know what, out of all these, she only could do, like, that kind of knowledge so they can start understanding what's going on, because you guys know that. Yeah. They don't. Can you put on a video presentation uh, you know, that we could? Even that, like, we, I'll just sit down and say, I don't know, we did a video, so you can understand. And point okay, out like maybe some sort of a, a PowerPoint where yeah, we'll, 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 we'll say this is the needs, and then, but we have to cut it down to maybe this, and then kind of highlight some of those projects that are but like the bigger the, projects. The key fact is, but if you don't do this, none of this is going to happen. And if you think you got problems by raising rates, which your little people don't have one. Just like the whole that uh, take a pipeline for two weeks, uh, the world came to an end because it does. Even what we're going to say right now, that's, about that's what we got to do. Then tap in. Nobody should tap utility funds. Like nobody. No. Without us, you guys don't exist. No fire department exists. Nothing exists. So why are you messing with the money? Fire department don't work without water. Because as, if my <laughs> revenues go up, they take more. No, but they that's take what. A percentage but of my I understand that. But that's what we need to tell them because we don't understand that. But you put it to a point where it shows. Even even and when I threw it back on talking, but it's called do it again. Hey, you know what? We have another upgrade I want to talk to you about. Cause we, you ask everybody, when is the last time you talked to your city council member about anything we talk about here? It's kind of hard because I've, I've been asking every meeting, can you please send us something so we can start educating them and teaching them so they can understand? Because you guys know that. They don't we know. talk a lot more than what's on the agenda. Yeah. And so somehow or another, we have to start fitting that in one boot to take and work. Because no politician wants to hear or wants his constituents to hear that they're going to raise rates or taxes. Look at what's happening right now with the, with the appraisal district. They raised, I mean, uh, I'm in real estate, and I get calls every day. What can I do? What can I do? I said, well, let me do an analysis. Uh, well, you can go out there and, you know, you can file this and file that. They have a recourse. Here, people with water rates don't have a recourse. It's the councilman is their recourse. And their councilman does not want to raise rates because why? I'm not going to get rid of it. And we don't the, want to county, the county we sort of brags that they block our our by half a percent. People, like every right? city. Like that. Yet they raise the, the values by right. 30, 40, 50, and 200 percent. Well, well, so. it's well, the study has to dictate what you need to be at. We cannot say I need to be the same as McAllen. I need. To be no, the same no, no. You guys are telling us that. Remember, you've looked at other cities the same. Like they, their rates are higher than ours. Did, did I hear that from Gene Bermudez? That's mm -hmm. what. That's what I'm talking about. Then to back up this, what Gene said, we have a study for our own city that this. Well, the study that's going to gonna come up as soon as we can contract the, the, the firm will show that picture and paint that picture because that's his job to come up and say, look, this is the race out there. I thought that's what Jane already did with that other group. Because remember, there were, there were no, that, that was a master plan. No, so that's how, the does, master plan. How, does, how does this reflect the master plan? Like, this is out of the master plan. Okay. But it's not the full master plan. There's more. It's about 10 years, right? 10 years. This is only five years. This yeah, is whatever it's we 10 need. years of, of this now. Years. And this is what staff, like, we'll get all the superintendents involved and say, okay, what do you need? Okay, what, what projects are you seeing that we need to do? And that's how this list is almost compiled, you know, because it's the what needs to be fixed. No, yeah, no, no, type no. But I can tell you this right now if we don't sell a bond, none of these are going to get done because well, I do not have the funds. Sell right or now. not sell a bond, we need to educate our council members on what you guys need. I mean, that, that is the fact. Because say for one day, you can actually do something. Oh, I mean, I need to talk. No, we should start. They go, we, we met uh, this week. I need to talk to you. They have a presentation I need to show you. And these are the things. The next one, hey, we have, and, and then when we meet again, what did your council member say after you talked to them? What did your council member say after you talked to them? We'll have some sort of feedback to give you guys. Because there's no communication between both of you guys. That's what we're here for. But if you don't give us the knowledge to give them, to also teach us, what to talk about, and then get the response. And every time we come here, we have a response. Then we know where we're at. But we don't have. I, don't talk, I haven't talked to Sila since since the beginning of, of I've been here. Why? Because I really don't know what to talk about. Well, with the CIP, I can identify what we need. This is the draft, and I can tell you, look, these are the projects. Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like something and, simple, nothing complex, just. And, and, and I'm not really 
following the full master plan? Yeah. Because it's too expensive. We can't afford, we can't spend the money fast enough. But but I mean you you obviously you've spent money on this master plan, right? And now it's a ten year plan. And what is the cost for the whole master plan? Like is it five hundred million? Is it you know what I mean? Like like I think that's some of the information that the, like my council person wants to know, like what's in the master plan, how much does that cost? And then secondly to that, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, um, and just, I mean, I don't know anything about what you guys do. Other That's than, okay. But, but I, I, I start thinking about it from a practical perspective and I'm like, okay, I know we have a lot of development to the north with all the warehouses that are coming. Yeah, I know for a fact that Laredo is, you know, number one in the port boom, and, man, and, big boom. and we have severely undersized on our warehouses. So. That work, I know you guys were doing work out there to get those online. That should generate more revenue for you guys. Right? Actually, after mile 15, it's the cities, they're, they're tapping to their own water. Just yeah, to let yeah, you know, yeah. you're, you're seeing the growth, but there's no water being tapped on the city yet. So I guess to sort of bring it all back, how much of these projects, like like I see one for replacement of water meters, right? Mm -hmm. Does that would no. that help you increase your revenue? Because now you're not yeah, getting because the, the accuracy and some of the meters that we have, they're already be, they're reaching their life end of life. Conservation. So it's like it's like to me, there's like two sets of projects. There's projects that are strictly maintenance because they're old and we need to fix them. But then there's projects that if we do these, we could maybe drive up our revenue a little bit. I guess that's the way I'm. Yeah. I'm well, remember the last time we said we we can't afford to drop the rate like it was supposed to have dropped. Yeah. Well, if we would have done that, I think we would have been in worse shape. Yeah. And right now it's increasing, but it's not increasing at a good rate. Because a lot of the areas, a lot of the utilities, what they're going through with drought, cost of materials, you know, COVID did a lot of changes in cost of materials. Materials have gone up a lot. Delay too. Mm -hmm. The delays and all that. So <coughs> the market demand is driving costs up. Well, we're not reflecting that in our rates right now. I'm still like, I'm losing on um, some of the meters that I install because we need to update our ordinance. We're going through that process. So the rate has to be reviewed and that's why I'm, I've got this consultant. It's a good consultant. Their fees are a little bit higher than what we normally pay, but I need to kind of trim down their scope. Their scope. But, you, but even as a city council member, it's like, I could be here for eight years. What am I going to do after those four years? What can I leave? So right now to my concern is what can we what can we educate and say, hey, this is what's important, Mike. If, if this thing gets approved, this is what they need to get done. You know, but most of the time, they, if, they're, if they're not knowledgeable, they're not going to know when Arturo's talking. They're just like, oh. And, they, and also, that's the sad part is, they all say that you take your, your water is the first thing, and you go to the meetings right at the end when everybody's falling asleep. <laughs> Why aren't they the first? You take me to Did you also shoot the water? No, no, but I'm saying, but you think about it. No, you think about it. If all the council members say water is the first thing, why are they allowed? Because you know why? Because they do it in alphabetical order, so it's always airport and then this. No, but you know what? This is the this is the problem with the council. This is this is just my opinion. They have an agenda that they're supposed to follow. They should start with, you know, public comments, you know, and then they always start with their items, make up the entire thing. Like this last meeting on Monday, three hours after presentations, and you know, then this gets started to with business. And then they've got to follow the protocol of now the agenda. So by the time the consent agenda rolls around, it's already like 10 o'clock at night. But all the certificates should be given at the end of the, the ceremony, you know? Like, I think that, well, they have the one at 5 o'clock. But oh, I mean, it's sad to do because I'm trying to stay up and listen. And then I'm like, they, they have to end at 11, right? Or something like they have to end at 11. You can't go past. So a lot of times, your business doesn't even get covered. Or they, you know what? The consent agenda, to me, is the most important part of the agenda because that's where all your millions of dollars are at. And sometimes they're like, oh, hey, approve consent agenda number one through number 60, but no, but pull out this one and this one. And usually what they pull out is utilities. This last time, they didn't, but that was really rare. So that's what I'm saying. If, if, if we push knowledge over, we actually go talk to our council members. When we come back, we could talk about what we, and if they don't respond, if my council member doesn't want to talk to me or respond, then I'll say, you know, I'm out. It was the whole point of me being here. You know, so I mean that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Everything I'm saying, you give us something, and not a lot. 
just hey, educate them about this and what this is going to do and that. Next, and then we'll talk about. We come back and we talk about it. <coughs> what did your council member say? Well, they said this. They didn't know about that. Cool. But we have something that we're doing. We're knowledgeable. Okay. okay. And what about <coughs> somebody here from this board were to stick their neck out for the utilities commission and put their hand in the fire? And then public comments mentioned something about moving the agenda to. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm here, right? They'll pull all my items off and have this because he did. You know, I, you know I, think this, I think this has priority. I, I, I think the best way, like I said, we keep giving knowledge and then be like, hey, you know what? Like, why is it that you taste at the end? You know, I think you guys should okay, maybe so, start. So, but going up to the, to that is no, yeah, but that's why the community. Rest for brevity, yeah, put it this way. Right. So no. what we're saying, what we're saying is, and, and it's, it's understood, we need to have material to cover with our, our councilman or councilwoman. Okay, so now we hand them this material, but you hand them, you know, individually. And, and individually. Then they go to the meeting and half them got it and half, half didn't understand it, and you know. So we're still in the same quandary. Uh, can't they call the special city council meeting with the agenda utilities only? Do to talk to the mayor? Well, we had a workshop, and only a few council members showed up. Yes, because they, they called for the workshop, and I believe it was only one, maybe four of them showing up. And they didn't have it did require a quorum because it was a workshop. But that's what I'm. But the people about. that most have concerns about utilities didn't even show up for the workshop, oh. right? And we were the first one because I requested if you could be the first one that time in the workshop because they had PD, fire, utilities, and I believe they had health. There was a workshop to cover topics within those. I requested for utilities to go first. So that was the only time that we've gone first because it was a special request. But you said, but now, <laughs> if we don't understand what they're giving us and we don't say anything, then we go talk to our council member and we kind of convince them then we don't know what the hell we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to sit down and make sure they understand that they don't, what are the questions? Okay, I didn't think about that either. And then come back and said, hey, this is what my council member, they didn't understand this. I didn't understand when we finally talked about it. But if we can't just go and be like, oh, we talked about this, what do you think? No, well, let's actually sit down and. Let me, let me, I'm gonna take it on my shoulders. I'm okay. gonna go talk to Dr. Tully, our mayor. And I'm gonna talk to him what we, we conversed here for the past 30 minutes. And we've gotten over, all right? <clears throat> that I want to request that he call a special council meeting with a, an official board meeting to talk nothing but water. Because, and he knows life is water. Without it, we're all shot. <clears throat> we talked about the fire department, we talked about this, but everybody else gets a chunk of the money. And nobody wants to rate rates, raise rates. I don't want to raise rates, but if we have to, we have to. I mean, I go half a mile further to go get gas at 314 versus 329. I mean, we're all trying to resolve issues. Material, you're right. I went to Lowe's yesterday, I was going to get a, a soft wall conduit, uh, one inch. And they used to be seven, eight dollars, twenty-five dollars for that little piece of tin foot. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. You know, so I know that all this, everything's affecting everything. It's just a domino effect. And it's not because who's in office, who's not in office. It's just something residual that's catching up with it. I think it's just knowledge, no yeah. matter who's sitting on the chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the bottom line is, the only way we're going to effectively touch all of them is that it's a, it's an official city council meeting, uh, and, it's, and the topic is water. I mean, and then boom, hit them with all this stuff and make them understand. I mean, okay, I, I, I get Social Security, and they're telling me, well, really, they want to reduce your Social Security. Wow, why? I put three hundred fifty thousand in it. Because they're taking from that fund to run the government, and that's what they're trying to do here, or they're doing. And so I, I understand, pitch in your your little bit to, to run the administration, but the rest got to take care of that, you know. And, and and then, so what happened to the councilman on the water break? Was did they, anybody give him a phone call? Every every constituent in there was on his because why didn't you know, right? I've been there with the phone company, and so. It's, it's a big monster, and we can't resolve it individually. It has to be united front, hit them with it. We all sit in there just like right now, and support you 150%. If not, I'll resign. If we're not going to, if we're not going to be effective, I enjoy the lunch, I enjoy the camaraderie, but I got things to do. I should be in San Antonio right now. 
And, and I came to the meeting, right? <laughs> My business is all over South Texas. But, but this is important to me. But also tell them, this is what they pay our total for. They don't pay you guys to run the utility department. Right. They pay him. They pay him. That's it. Like, I, I but it's easy to blame it. How come you didn't know anything? They can blame us so much for the law, but they shouldn't decide. They should be like, okay, our total, we trust you. Uh, what funds do you need? And that's it. You know? And they will have they to do a massive meeting. Yeah, I know. They've already told him, we don't trust you. Yeah. When they find someone else. Yes. No, no. We told her. No, I'm going to be like, well, you don't trust me, find someone else. It's like. No. No, no, but I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm not going to lie to me. Just trust no, me. But, but, no. Okay, so. I'm with you 150%. I believe in your shoes. Yeah. 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 I've been in your yeah. shoes. I've been in I could talk to you for 10 hours and tell you what all the stuff happened to me in that area. But the bottom line is, if the powers to be don't understand, don't expect them to support you. That's my whole point. Exactly. You know? I mean, but sure. can I say something? I think that even if they understand some of it, I think for the most part they lack conviction. Man. They lack the conviction. No, that's right. And, and I'm going to tell you, like, I'm going to get a little bit off subject. But, but I've been to, like, political meetings, a guy like Yo Carnes Asada and stuff, where, you know, you have somebody that wants to push an agenda through council mm -hmm. or through yeah. and they'll talk about it, and you're going to see it. Yeah. You're going to see it you know, get pushed through. We, we know that. But there, there's money involved. Right? Like, the money like, 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 like Arturo said, I want to go to sleep knowing that I did all these things. I want to I wanna feel like, hey, okay, fine. Do what the fuck you want to do, but we are acknowledging you. Yes, we're being recorded. You're, 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 you're being acknowledged. <laughs> okay, so I want to be, I mean, I'm, I'm transparent what I do. I really thought about resigning. Why? I've been on this committee since it's inception. And we haven't done anything but have a good lunch and good friendship. Because we haven't taken one item to the city council says we need this passed because the city council doesn't know what we're talking about. And if you don't educate your leaders, don't expect them to help you lead you anywhere. So, like I said, I will propose, if everybody's in agreement, I will go talk to the mayor, and I will step to the mayor, and I will tell him exactly, as a co-chair or a member, or whatever it is. But, just to one statement that I want to make. We did push an item up there that I remember mm -hmm. is the groundwater with the, uh, Regarding getting more groundwater for webcam, mm -hmm. which that was something Legacy wanted to do to support them, because I know in the uh, water plant it's not part of it, and because we can only draw so much water, so Legacy is restricted. But from a regional standpoint, we need to increase that because uh, Winter Garden is going to affect us. We're mm -hmm. not represented, and mm -hmm. I think that's something that back then I think it was a bad choice that was done because we should have participated because that way you know what you're doing. Yeah. Right now there's legislation. If you're going to get groundwater from another county, it's going to easily have a 20 cent charge on it. Well, yeah. Because, you know, yeah. they, they've done that. So it's it's adding cost. Mm -hmm. And if we're involved with groundwater management districts, we could then control our future. Now it's like what's there and you have to follow. Question. How deep do we need to go to find good water? Here. Right now, here, with the depths that they're going, I think, uh, I believe, I've seen about 2,200 feet. Mm -hmm. And the water needs cooling towers because it's coming out. Yeah, oil. it's coming out hot. All right. So that might be an alternative. Geothermal. Yeah, geothermal. Yeah, because Webb County is sitting on a hot geothermal pocket. Mm -hmm. I got involved with a group that I found in a spot, this hot spot, and it's just down the road. You know, that's what I'm telling you, that there's more to this than meets the eye. Mm -hmm. And we're all not educated at it. And a good point, good points, everybody's made good points. But I go back again. If we are the ones that have the knowledge, and I go tell my councilman, and the councilman interprets it a certain way, there's nobody going, whoa, 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 that's not what he means. We're in trouble. And we're doing that with eight people. Right? So, yeah, when you're saying hot, what do you mean? Like it's warm? Or there's a lot that comes up oily. Oh, yeah. Because it's so deep yeah. down. Yeah, it's so deep down that they got to have cooling towers to cool off the water. Oh. Before it, yeah. 
But it's 110 degrees. That's what's called a geothermal well. Yeah, that's because it's, 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 it's hot. It's oh, okay. close to, yeah. Yeah. You can actually, so you can, it's you, can actually, you can actually generate electricity off of it. No, it is good because you generate electricity to run the RO for this practice too. <coughs> How do I find out? Because I'm in, I'm in real estate. They asked me what stuff you guys have no idea. <laughs> so we'll get educated real quick. Okay. Well, uh, if I now that I, I have a floor here, I, I would like to commend or note the people that prepared this draft. Yeah, very good work, uh, and it, it is a little uh, <clears throat> complex for some individuals that have never seen anything like this before. Uh, I don't want to take any pop chops at any of our council members, but it, it, it would confuse them, it would puzzle them. And being that this is not going to be the only uh, proposal they see, they see a whole bunch of us. Yeah, when you see the ULS, hey, yeah. this is not done overnight. Yeah. Oh, anyway, no. it takes a while because we put yeah. it in this year, and then next year, if it didn't get funded, then we got to push it out forward yeah. and That's say, is the cost still the same? Yeah. It, it took us uh, several now, days. If I may, from my and I'm sure prior other meetings and experiences, if we could have, it's a suggestion. I don't, I don't work for the Utilities Commission, uh, but if we can have an over under uh, on the totals. Uh, it may help or it may not. You may think about it. Over under, when I say over under, I'm saying what's the difference in, in, in monies from last year to the year before to the year before? Over under, under could it be in, in, in what do you say, parentheses? No, those are not parentheses. Yeah, that's minus. Yeah? minus. Yeah. Okay. Brackets? Yeah. Come on. Like a bracket. Bracket, yeah. That way the individual that's seen oh, this. Mike. Mike. I'm sorry. That way the individual that's, that's reading this. Uh, this uh, proposal, when it's no longer a draft, we'll say, oh, okay, all right, I see what you're at, right? Yeah, it'll be clearer, right? Because you, you're just throwing, I'm not going to say just, you're throwing a number out there, but compared to what? To, to our numbers. These are estimates of what we think the projects are going to oh, cost. Oh, estimates. These are estimates of what the projects are going to cost. So today, it's, today. it's today's prices. It's Everybody going to change. Yeah, okay, like estimate. next year, this, this, let's assume, for example, we put, you know, I'm just going to take a top one, 5.9 million for, you know, the majestic district six lane. Well, next year, maybe it's 6 million or mm -hmm. 6.5 million. And million. what this per se, this number here, 18, 580, 500, is that dollars? Dollars. Oh, okay. All right. Because it doesn't have a dollar sign on it. It's no, we, but this is, the CIP is, this is what it's going to cost to do this project. They, this, uh, the software is, it doesn't have on the software. So, the software, right? so it's, it's accounting is thrown in here with the material and where the head is and all that. Okay, now, under unfunded, now that I'm here, un, under unfunded proposal CO on the first page, mm -hmm. it says looping of lines in the colonias areas. It doesn't specify which colonias. Okay, well, this is just a summary that I, I just wanted to give you all. But I actually, this is the summary to all of this over here. Mm -hmm. So each one of these projects has a detailed listing that tells you a description of exactly what's going to happen and then you know the cost in there. Okay. But this report is just a summary of the project. If you oh. wanted to say, okay, I want to talk about the looping, right? So I'd go to look for my project here and I'd be like, okay, um, uh, well, this one's over here and you know. Okay, remember the looping helps all the pressure. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, the, all the standard water. And how long did, ago did we talk about looping? Yep. Well, it's, it's like, you know, we're still going. And, and so I just said, so looping of approximately 6,000 in your feet of 8 inch lines in the colonias to improve water quality. Uh, Actually, the AI is really awesome, Arturo, that we're using it, and it, it's going to tell us uh, what's important in Laredo. This is great to see all the work that, that needs to be done, and uh, I think we're, I think we're good. And that, that's I mean that's all I've been saying is I mean I, I feel like I've been mean, like like he said I've been pointing this for you guys here, and I want to do more, and I want to for you guys to tell me I want you to talk. Well, you know, I think when we get ready one. to present to council something that we really need your backing for is when I think. But, but you're gonna you understand what I'm, I'm saying. If I meet with my council member after this and say, hey, these are the points I talked about, and, and then when we come back, we can talk about what they're thinking or any questions they have. So when you have that, oh, we're gonna, well, you already have kind of what's okay. going on. What I'll do is I'll Because what I really hate mm -hmm. 
is someone telling me the day, the week before two weeks before hey, this needs to be pushed? But we've been talking about it, like just normal conversation. I go, hey, uh, Mr. Now, nah, remember when we were talking about that three months ago when we meet? Now it's coming up to council. Well, what we'll do is this, because this is a CIP that, like I said, it's a draft, right? Yeah. So I'll present, I kind of dwindle it down to probably just 100 and tell you these are the projects that are coming forward and this is why we need these projects, right? And then in July, we will be starting July, August. Right now, we've got to go through count, through management and, and, you know, and start working on our budget. Oh, we already have the budget proposed, right? When we get ready to start going to the budget workshops is when, like, I'll be educating you on these projects yeah. so that when it goes to the budget workshop and we're trying to say we need to sell a bond for these projects, it's kind of like they already know about it. So for me, it's just a bond for what you, I know you have a bunch of projects, but that bond's not going to cover all of them. No. I just want to talk about, I just want to yeah. with this, this little it's, line. It's right 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 yeah, that's it. That's all I want to talk about. Condense it in a separate spreadsheet that will not look like this because obviously this is a CIP software, yeah. right? I'm going to go into a basic Excel. You know, it's in the bottom. Why and all that. Okay. Um, and uh, you're, you're a, so I, I, I have, uh, I have to go over here, uh, uh, the meetings are being recorded by the camera up there. Are we live? No. Bueno, we're not live. Uh, so when we are on YouTube and somebody can go and see the, the, the meetings that we have here, uh, it, are the comments open or are the comments closed? I think they're closed. Okay. Uh, I, was thinking, I was thinking maybe if they are closed that they could be open. That way people can uh, Make an opinion. How many hits do you get on this? Um, a couple hundred views, if that. Well, if, if we can uh, inform our our community that there are meetings, there are people that that care about what's going on with our water, and uh, I believe this group has shown some some concerns or a deep level. Now, I'm going to throw to that's just on the YouTube here. I'm going to throw a little humor here. And I, I don't. I do not want to let the cat out of the bag. We are not at that juncture. And I. And I'm going to make a statement here. Of, uh, in regards, we're talking a lot about money and selling bonds and and rates and whatnot and <clears throat> making people uncomfortable, maybe threatening them or telling them we, we may have to raise your rates. And nobody wants to hear that. So leading to if only someone in my head had a proposal to increase revenue without raising rates or selling bonds. Some homework I've done. I'll leave you with that thought. Good. We need to move on to this guy's behind left and we're out of our time. Uh, number six, let me start water partnership. That is ongoing. Um, I know we're trying to set up some meetings with someone like uh, Del Rio and Eagle Pass, and uh, I'll be meeting with the, our city attorney and trying to set up some meetings and have them get discussions. So that's where that stands right now. Yeah, the, the only other thing I wanted to report on also, there's a survey that we, I guess, you. So that'd be the Great. Gentlemen, if I may, uh, I have to go and have some neurological uh, studies done on me, and I have been waiting on this appointment since uh, January of this year. Well, we still have a form at four. Well, we still have a form. Yeah, he left. Oh, yeah, there's four of us. Well, we're not. You're not going to take any action, yeah. right? Well, yeah, yeah. Not in order to discuss any meeting with the Yeah. Well, then what we'll do is we'll just push the water conservation to the next time. Yeah. Right? First. Suspend the water conservation and uh, topping for the next meeting. We'll do that. I need a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you for, for showing up and for being here.